Hi there. We are making date pinwheels today. This is my mom's recipe. She makes it every December for all the different Christmas functions. I've never made it without her, but this year you and I are gonna give it a go. So I did go ahead and contact her and we have some tips and tricks and we're gonna go ahead and go through the ingredients first. So the first thing you're gonna need are dates. If you've never had dates, they are a big pumpkin raisin that is kind of chewy. You want chopped dates. I went to Target, couldn't find them. Then I went to Harris Teeter and found pitted dates, which is good. You don't want the pit in them or you'd have to dig them out. So we're gonna use this and my mom said it's fine because they're gonna cook into a paste with us. Then we will need three fourths cup of sugar. We'll need a half cup of water. We'll need a fourth teaspoon of salt. We'll need a half cup of butter softened, it's softening right now. We'll need one large egg, half teaspoon of vanilla, but you do that with your heart. That's goose. Uh, we'll need a fourth teaspoon baking soda, and then two cups of flour, as well as one half cup of brown sugar. And that's the ingredients. Okay, step one, we're going to combine our flour into the small bowl, along with our salt and our baking soda. We'll just give this a little mixy. And then, oh, not all the baking soda came out. So we'll just do that number, mix that in. We're gonna go ahead and cream our butter over here. You do wanna use a hand mixer. I don't know a lot about baking, but I will give you this tip. You do not wanna put any other utensil in there or you will ruin your hand mixer. So I'm gonna go ahead and cream this butter really quick. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and add in half a cup of sugar to cream. We'll put all of our brown sugar in there and then we're gonna add our egg and vanilla. So I'm gonna do this very slowly. Creaming up nice, I think. And we'll add in our egg and our vanilla here and cream that all together. And my mom said you don't want to over cream it. Don't do it too much. This we'll call that's good because my hand is tired. All right, moving on, let's pause there. So you're actually gonna wanna get all of this dough together. It's a little sticky and you'll make it into a ball. You'll put it in the cling wrap and then go ahead and put it in the fridge for an hour. when you're not on camera. All right, going in the fridge. See you in an hour. Okay, next we'll add our fourth cup of water and our sugar and then our dates. And we're gonna bring that to a boil and then we'll let it simmer for five minutes. I'm gonna go ahead though and kind of chop up the dates just to help the process along for my mom's instruction. So we'll go ahead and do that. 
I'm just gonna put the water on first. And then um, I'll put the dates in, I guess. Wait. And we're trying to get these to be a nice mixture of the paste. And my mom said that it's very easy to burn the dates. So I think I'm just gonna add more water if I see that it's getting a little bare. So again, we're waiting for this to become a paste. Maybe cut the video there. Right. So after you chilled that, um, we're gonna talk about a couple of tips. At first we used cling wrap, but wax paper turned out to be a little bit better. And um, it says an hour or overnight, we went ahead and um, took the longer version there. So once your dates are cooled, you'll roll them on your dough and you're gonna roll them into the ball like this, it's kind of a log. So ideally you get the spiral of the date pinwheels. I'm not so sure how we did. Um, but now at this point, you're gonna be ready to bake. So we preheated our oven to 375 and now we're gonna slice these into little rolls and um, put them on a sheet to bake. So. That one didn't really have any dates in it, so we'll just leave that one out. But let's see how this is gonna look. Kind of rolly. So we'll just go this and bake them for 10 to 12 minutes and then we'll let them cool. Go. All right, after 10 to 12 minutes, what you're gonna look for is a little browning on the edge. You wanna get them off that tray quickly and put them on a cooling rack or a piece of paper or the counter or whatever so they're able to cool completely. So you should have a nice little circle depending on how you cut it and it's gonna be delicious. Some pro tips that we did learn is, um, I told you about the wax paper, but also my mom said the dates whole would cook down. I would not recommend that. I would really chop them. We actually had to use a potato masher. Um, so I'd go ahead and just chop them before you cook them, but let's give them a taste. Pretty good. Thanks for joining us.